Shepherd with Pamela Shep Productions. How are you? So glad to be back. Uh, what I'm going to work on today is to show you that I've been working on English paper piecing. I didn't know if I would like English paper piecing, so I decided to give it a try. So I had to look up all kinds of stuff, and I didn't want to put a lot of money into it. I wanted to see if I liked it. So um, I'm really excited because I do like it, and I have uh, some things I want to show you. Uh, that I've been doing for English paper piecing and so if you want to check out a few things about it Then go ahead and watch this video if you like it give it a thumbs up and please subscribe It's free to subscribe. I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers. So anyhow, I'll uh, Go ahead with this and we'll get busy and I'll show you all kinds of fun stuff about English paper piecing that I've learned Okay, English paper piecing, EPP as they call it. I decided I wanted to give it a try, but I didn't want to go to a ton of expense. So uh, they have different patterns. I felt like I needed a pattern. Uh, you know, in the olden days, they, they would just make up their own patterns and they would just use cereal boxes and what have you. So I ordered this online from Yellow Rose Quilt Company. And it has 16, <clears throat> 16 different blocks. And um, I wanted, I just wanted to give it a try. So I read through the whole thing. You get the, um, you get the copy of the, let's see if this is block one right here. You get block one where it shows you how to, you know, how to put them all together, what ones you cut out and where they belong. And you get block two is the same, block three, block four. Then each block, I have these in order. Uh, you get the you get the printouts to cut the templates with. So what I did for the templates, uh, my husband had this stuff here in the garage. I don't even know what it is or what it's for, but it was clear and it was a little bit thick. But you could use. Um, Anything that's thick, it doesn't have to be clear. You can use those dividers from notebooks or, or whatever. They sell different things. But I thought, well, I have this. I'm going to use it. So I laid out the... So I laid out the um, templates for cutting uh, the fabric with. So, you know, I would use block one. And these don't have to be totally as you can see, okay, because you're cutting the fabric with these. Then you end up cutting out your squares that really need to be precise. But anyhow, you have your blocks that you cut all, uh, you cut all these so that you can cut your fabric. You don't have to have these because you could use your little block and just lay it on the fabric and cut a little bit wider than the fabric. This one, I think, leaves a 3 8 inch seam. See if I can make this come back. This one has a 3 8 inch seam. Some of them only use a quarter inch seam, but I, I like this. So anyhow, I cut this out. So this was block number one. So then I got busy. And here was the block number one where it shows me where to put all the different letters and everything. And here is, I don't think I have block number one still in here. So I'll show you like... Let's see, this is block two, for instance. You print this out and you cut all these. They print you, they give you enough in this to print all of these out and then cut them. And I'll show you how I cut them to make them precise. One thing I did wrong, the first time I cut my squares, uh, my, uh, the, the cardboard to actually, not these, but the cardboard pieces this size, I used 110 cardstock and it was too heavy so 65 pound cardstock works great you can actually just cut up cereal boxes or or anything like that so let me show you block number one that i made now i did not use the color fabric that they had exactly because um, i have different fabric so this was block number one. Oh, that's block number three what am i doing just a minute. <laughs> Here's block number one. Okay, there's block number one. So as you can see, I chose 
different colors to use for my quilt. And I use the same throughout. Every time it calls for this fabric, I use that one, you know. I think this is five different ones on this block. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five different fabrics on this one. So, as you can see in the back, uh, you put your blocks in there. And the way you put your blocks in there is you glue them around the edges. And then after you get it finished like this, you can literally you take your blocks out. And if they don't tear... Now, this one, these are stuck in considerably more because I'm going to talk about the glue in just a minute. Come on. I used a too, really maybe too sticky of a glue on this particular block. The rest of them I didn't. But that's a block C. Okay. And there's a C, and there's a C, and I put my C there. These are C's. And it tells you where to put the C's, you see. Now, this company here, I think this was only like $12, and I didn't want to go to, I mean, they have some amazing ones that I really do want to do, but I don't want to pay, you know, $59 or $70. I just wanted to try it, so I got this one to try it to see if I like it, and I like it. I really like it. I love sitting in the evenings and doing this. So you get your block C. And then you cut your fabric out this big, see? And you cut your fabric out, and then you turn it over, you put your block C in there, and you fold these over and glue them. I'm gonna show you how to do all the gluing and a little bit of stitching after I tell you everything that I used to do this. So that was block number one. And then block number two, was this one. Here's block one and block two. I'm using the same fabrics, but as you can see, they um, they coordinate, but they're different. And I will end up putting a sashing between them to, to maybe calm it down just a little bit. So there's block one, there's block two. And this block three is considerably brighter because one thing I did differently when it called for, let me see if this one is, this is block three. They were calling for a light, really light blue, and I ended up using this fabric in the place of that because I just liked the way it worked with all the colors. This one is a little bit busier, but but it's, it's good. I, I like it. Okay, so I'm going to lay these back down over here. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, items that you need to, to make these. Um, like I said, you got to draw something out if you want to use the templates to cut your fabric. And then you need some 65-pound uh, cardstock or so to use to make your blocks. I have this as pink right here, but this pink is 65 pound cardstock. So it's cardstock, but it's not so stiff. And so I will print out all the ones I need for number four, which is what I'm going to do next, and then I'll cut those out. And I'll show you just a couple of them, um, how I cut them out to try to make them really, when you cut your, your, you know, your square things to, to literally these little, these papers, your cardboards, you want those to be as true as you can, because that's what's going to make your quilt really hit the points and really do all the things it's supposed to do. And it's really, really, it's not, it's not hard at all. And what I like to do is sew these in the evenings when I'm sitting there with my husband. We watch old movies and old shows and stuff, and, and I really like sewing that. I actually take it in the car with me. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually take it in a big old uh, bag, a big plastic bag. I don't see, I don't have it laying right here, but I take a big old, I'll show you here. I've been taking a big old plastic bag with all my stuff in it, but that's just ridiculous. So I ordered this pattern. 
right in the middle, I'll give this little link by Annie.com. And it's a place for everything bag. So I'm going to make this to hold all of my English paper piecing. And so I've been picking fabric for that. Probably the hardest thing in all of this is to choose what fabric colors you want to use. And you just really lay them out together to try to figure out what colors you like to go together. I wanted mine to be sort of like this, but different. So I did use a burgundy and a blue and some that make it pop, you know. So like this blue and these burgundies. Yeah. And I like that color scheme. So this is what I ordered, and you can order this too. It's the Yellow Rose Quilt Company, and it's a starry sampler. And like I say, you get 16 squares, and they're all, uh, it shows the blocks here, all the different blocks. And here's how it, it'll show you the block number two and block number four. I, I just finished three and five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's very pretty, and I'm I'm loving it. So let's talk about what you actually need. So needles. I looked up online. Okay, which needles do you use for English paper piecing, and which thread, and what do you? What's the best way to do it? Well, lots of people said use fifty weight thread. So I have a bunch of Aurifil, and you're supposed to use the lightest color in the groupings that you're doing. So for a little while, I was using this one. This is a 50-weight Aurifil, and it's cotton. And um, I, I, I had a lot of tangles with it. It would tangle up on me pretty good. And you don't want to use, uh, they say, just use from here to your, you know, stretch it out to your elbow, and that's all. Don't use big, gigantic, long ones because it will start you know, uh, knotting up on you. When I, I'm going to show you how I sew a couple of lines and I'll, I'll tell you uh, how I do that. So that was giving me some problems, the Aurifil. So then I went and got some Guterman, uh, 50 weight. I like Guterman. I use a lot of Aurifil, maybe the most Aurifil, but I found this at Michael or Joanne's and it was, uh, I think it was $30, and I had a 60% off coupon for Sewing Notions. So I got 60% off this. So I think I paid like, I don't know. I'd have to figure it out right now. But I only paid something like $14 for this or so. And it has a lot in here. 26 I guess. So anyhow, they're, they're nice and, you know, all different colors. You don't really need that many colors. Honestly, what I'm finding, unless you're going to use really bright, Colors. Oops, let me unhook this. Come on. Okay. Um, what I find myself using the most is the creamy colors. Just because. So that's the Guterman. This is the Aurifil. Then I heard one girl talk about using Sue Daly designs. Because these were so hard to do. A friend of mine had given me a little sewing basket that that she had it's really pretty old and there was some of this wax in it so before i got this one i i ordered this online i thought well what let me see and so i would put this i would um put it down on the end and hold it you know and then i would let me see then i would run it through this wax that really did help that helped a lot that made all the difference uh, in the Aurifil and the Guterman thread. It really, this made it where it didn't tangle nearly as much. Which I have it tangled right now. Okay, so that really, really helped. So then, somebody said that they love the Sue Daly Wonderfill because it's, it's 80, let's see, where does it tell on here? It's 80, I saw it on here, 80 weight. Let me see where I saw that. Oh, here we go. 80 weight cottonized polyester thread. And the bigger the number, 
the smaller the thread. So this is a this is a thinner thread. This has become my favorite. It's thinner, and because I guess it's more polyester, it doesn't knot up anything like those knotted up, at least for me. The wax really did help it, but these, I loved this. So I ordered the one, since I noticed I was just using the creamier colors and just the muted colors, I ordered this off of Amazon, the Sue Daily Designs. And it's the 80 weight. It's the 80 weight cottonized polyester thread. That one is my favorite. So we're gonna leave this one here. Now, let's talk about needles. I ordered, I accidentally threw away the other package. I, I ordered some, um, this one. The applique needles, well, okay, before you can see it. The applique needles, number 10, big eye. Well, I liked it pretty good, but I kept losing them. I, I think you only get five. And so help me, I, I lost all five of them. I don't know. I, I think I like those. But then I saw, okay, somebody else said that they like the Milliner's Needle Straw, number 10. So that was this one, number 10, Hiroshima Needle Superior Polished Finish. The problem with this dude, let me get one out, the eye of this needle is so tiny that I... I mean, I flat out could not see to um, thread the needle. Could not. I had, you know, I ended up having getting the light with the magnifying glass and everything. So I thought, okay, I had this old-fashioned little needle threader, your little old-fashioned needle threader. And, you know, with just the right light, I'm not going to be able to do it here, I don't think. Oh yeah, I am. Okay, just the right light, you can get it through that little skinny needle. You can thread it and pull it through. Oops, not even doing the mirror. Okay, so the problem with that, you know, I only had one of these and then I actually broke it and then I lost the little, there was only this much of it left with that on it. I couldn't find it. So I had to go to Dollar General and buy a dollar sewing kit that had one of those in it. I couldn't find any anywhere. I don't know why. Seems like I've had them for years. So I'm going to order a whole pack of those, I think. But in the meantime, I decided, okay, I'm going to order these. You get 35 of these for like five or six bucks. I thought that's the way to go. So you can put these, these little ones. Let me see if I can put it up here real close for you. Have this little tiny hook. And, okay, I can't get it through this needle, the eye of this needle. I cannot get it through the eye of this needle. No matter how hard I try, it's just not big enough. Now, I've tried everything. And it comes in like four different colors. Didn't matter what color it was, it wouldn't work. So, the big eye, this one with the, the applique needle with the big eye, it may have gone through that one, but like I said, I lost them all. So then I saw a girl, okay, she uses John James straw needles. So I got 25 of those. And they're tiny too. I just couldn't get them through it. It was just way too much work. So this one was the John James. I could, if I worked, get this one through it. So I could I could thread the needle for that. But I did find on Amazon, they have a milliner's needle, a long, skinny milliner's needle, needle that does have a big eye. And I have that in. I'm going to order it. Well, I happened to have, I looked through all my needles, and I had one of these side threading needles. And, you know, those are where you just put your thread in, and you just pull it on the side. Uh, it has a little side thing and you just pull your thread up through there but it kept coming out i couldn't i couldn't get it to work fabulous even when i first bought these because i was doing some applique i couldn't get them to work that great even for that but you just pull it up on the side 
I couldn't keep it. It says it keeps it threaded. I even bought one of these little threaders. Let me get one with a bigger needle. I mean, with a bigger eye. So what I ended up doing is I found in my drawer just good old embroidery needles. They're thicker. They're, they have a bigger eye. Um, the other ones bend with your fingers. Well, good grief. Let me see if I can get it out. Ooh. Okay, this, this, um, the straw needle, and it's, you know, it's a little bit longer, the milliners, and it tends to, uh, you know, it tends to, you can manipulate it, like bend it somewhat, and it moves with your fingers. Probably easier on your fingers, but let me show you this with the big uh, eye. You put this down in here, you push that, and it, so it's got a hook that comes out and you hold it then you take and put a piece of thread through this Let's see if it's still in there you put a piece of thread through it and you let it go and you and you hook it on the little hook but see it it's really hard to work too and it was three dollars and something for two of them well, I didn't like that either. So I end up using this one, or if I'm gonna use the embroidery needle, these big dudes do fit in there. So the big eye is the big thing. I'm gonna go ahead and order the uh, other one. I'm gonna go ahead and order the milliner's, uh, a milliner's needle, but I'm gonna get the one with the big eye. because. Just to save you guys from buying all this stuff, that's what I'm going to do. But I do use these embroidery needles. Look, I got finger polish all over myself. So anyhow, I can use this to thread it. I can use this to thread it. And honestly, when I have my, uh, when I've got my light sitting there and I'm using my light and I'm using my um, magnifying glass, I can just thread the needle right into that big hole right there. So I can keep them. I think you get, let's see, how many do you get with this one? It's like 10 bucks, but I think six pieces. Yeah, when I like the best, I personally just like the good old embroidery needle for right now. Now, I have a hard time with a thimble. I've used uh, metal thimbles. I have all kinds of thimbles. In that same little basket that my friend had the uh, wax, the little deal of wax for the thread, had this in there it had this little weird little thimble so i stuck that on my finger and man that works good it's tight uh, i tend to push on the side not on the end uh, so i do use that I, that's probably my favorite in that i you i found this little cheapy one but it won't stay on but i i saw tula pink she says she puts a little double-sided tape before she puts a needle or a thimble on but this is my favorite so far I like it. I have another one ordered that didn't come yet that was supposed to be good, but so far this one's my favorite. And I don't know what brand it is or anything. It was just this little thimble inside of the inside of that deal. It's just nice and tight. And then what I what I actually do use a lot um, because I didn't have a thimble. I saw somebody do these real leather thimble pads. And so what you do on these, you can see I've used several of them. Um, you take it out, it's very sticky, and you can see where I had stabbed myself many times. So I put it right there where I literally push the pin, needle, I mean. And then when you're done with it, you can either stick it back on this, or sometimes I'll stick it inside the little sandwich bag thing that I have my stuff in. But yeah, that works really good. I ordered this from Amazon as well. And it's the thimble pad. And it works really good. It's nice and thick. I was going to go to the store and see if I could find some of those bandages for corns when I didn't have anything and I hadn't gotten my order from Amazon. But these work nice. I like these. So I like those and I like that. And so far, 
my preference for today until I get a big eye needle for something else is that embroidery. And it is stiffer by far, but it works okay for me. They're sharp, you know, and they go through pretty nice. Okay, so then the only other thing I was going to show you was the different glues, but I think I'll uh, bring up a couple pieces of the fabric that's cut. Uh, so, what do they call it? I actually use just good old Elmer's washable school glue, and it works quite good. I did use this, and that's the one, this Roxanne. I use it on all my quilts and everything. It's a temporary basting glue. And I use this, but it tends to, um, it tends to really hold it, <laughs> hold it quite a bit. That's the one I tried to tear out. This one is probably my favorite because the Elmer's glue is a fatter, uh, it's fatter on the, uh, you know, where you actually get the glue. This one is thinner. Um, this one is cheaper. So I ordered a package of the refills. These, this is the Sew Line Fabric Glue Pen, and that's the refills. Well, I've already used the one it came with, and one refill, and I have another one in here. So, and I, well, I did do some other ones first. I, I practiced on some of these other ones with different fabrics. So I have done one, two, three, four, five blocks but I certainly need some more of these glue pens or use this one. But as you can see, this one is smaller and that's, and it, you know, it, I'm almost out of that one too, but it works really well. So that's the glue. Uh, this one's probably my favorite. This one's cheaper and works pretty good. This is a little bit firm or maybe I'm putting too much possibly. That's my favorite needles. That's my favorite thread. These are my favorite thimbles for now. You do need some, uh, you need some scissors or snips uh, to use to keep in your bag because you'll, you'll need to be snipping stuff, you know, your thread. And so I use both of those. Okay, so now let's talk about the templates and the squares and I'll show you what I use for those, okay? A light plate. I bought this uh, what quite a while back, and what I got it for was to use with my Cricut. Bought it on Amazon. Didn't pay very much for it, but it you press it one, two, three times. This is my little ironing pad that I made. You know, it's just out of a piece of board like this, <laughs> and I stapled the fabric to it. That's what that is, and I iron on this a lot. But I thought I'd set this here. This is um, the template that comes with it, and this is one of the pieces that I took out of the garage from my husband. And you really don't have to have a light box or whatever they call them, I, but I happen to have one. But I'll show you when I turn it off, you can still see. You can still see really well. You don't have to have it. I just use a Sharpie. Um... Let's just put it over here. And now these do not have to be, you know, totally great. You know, they're okay because you're cutting the fabric by this. And the fabric is gives you a, oops, gives you a 3 8 inch shape. Now you could use a, a ruler, which might help considerably. But anyhow, I'll with that and then I do make the little box inside so that when I put this on the fabric I can see what's really going to show and then I do write block five and this one is B so that's what I do there then I just take one of my pairs of Tim Holtz scissors or something that's not my fabric scissors and I cut it this is pretty crooked. It's the little blocks that I'm going to show you in a minute that really need to be, really need to be correct. So then that would be my block 5B template. And so then what I would do um, is I'm going to cut out all of these blocks. This, they send you enough 
they copy everything that you're going to need for block five. You cut these out, you have all the ones that you're going to need. Okay, so I'm going to do one of the block B's to show you what I'm talking about. So what I do, um, I can turn this on, but it really doesn't come up through there. You can cut this on any, this is actually from the Dollar Tree. You could cut it on that. It doesn't matter. So I'm gonna shut this off because it, it doesn't really matter on this one. I just happened to grab some pink paper that's 65 pound. You can get any paper that's, you know, just regular cardstock. What I do to make sure that these turn out correctly, I got this metal ruler at the Dollar Tree. It's a jot, and I've had it for a long time, so I really did only pay a dollar instead of a dollar and a quarter. And I just put it just inside the black line. This is just a, one of those uh, knives. I actually got this quite a while ago and I got it at Home Depot or Lowe's, I don't know where, but you can get these almost anywhere. And then I go through and I cut it like this. And I get, you know, just almost on the outside. And I cut it like this. Now, I tried cutting it with scissors, but honestly, I I can't really cut that great with scissors. I don't know. And I put this just barely where it's just at the... And whatever you do, do it the same. Because you want these to turn out about the same. And you cut out your block. So that should be all four sides. And that's the block that you need and you want it to go with your new template that you did your block fits in the middle of the template but like i said you don't have to even do this because now i'm going to cut the fabric and i'll show you um i have this piece of fabric that i'm going to use and so i'm going to now, if you wanted to specifically really pick out specific flowers or something, that's where this comes in handy because you can see inside where you can get exactly what you want. If you want something specific on every single one of them, you can do that. But this one I'm just going to do anyway. Now, I I've been, I bought this. This is the Sue Daly it has just the, it is a turning thing but look at i i was drawing on it with that with this um sharpie and i got it all over it and i felt so sad about it i did not want to get that all over my sharpie so i had purchased this at the dollar tree it's a it's i think what you send in with your cricket but there's like a deal on top of it this is a little bit sticky so i've been drawing on that so that I don't ruin this mat, or it wouldn't matter if I ruin that mat, but I don't want to ruin this. So anything, a piece of cardboard, another piece of cardstock, anything to keep the Sharpie from ruining something. So then what you, what you do is you take your block that you drew out, let's just say here, and you can actually use a Sharpie or a pen or a Frixon pen, but this doesn't really show, so it doesn't really matter. And then you take a good pair of fabric scissors. And these, I have my Kai, K-A-I. Oh my gosh, I love these. They're just like butter. I love these. Okay, so then you're gonna cut your, gonna cut your fabric according to that line. And this, once again, see, it's going to fold over three-eighths of an inch. So it's not desperate if you don't cut these exactly right. The main thing you need to cut really, really good are your little pieces that you're going to put inside your fabric. That's important. So we're going to cut this real quick. And we're going to cut this real quick. Now, if when I'm doing a bunch of these, I got a bunch of them cut, then this is what's nice because you don't have to have this either. You can use anything. You can uh, use this once again. It doesn't matter. 
because we're going to use glue and I'll use this, uh, this so steady one that I like. And we're going to use that. And what you do is you put your, you literally put your block inside your square as even as you can get it, but you can see, see how much is extra around it, which makes it so nice because, um, then I start here and I, oops, oops, what's it going on here? Okay. Let me put that back like it was. I'm going to take this off for right now and I'm going to put this right across here and there. Now, one of the reasons you don't put it right against the edge you're not supposed to is because you're gonna sew, that's where you literally sew your stuff onto the next deal. Okay, Ooh, almost looks like I didn't put quite enough there. Okay, there we go. Then I turn it and I do it on this side and you don't have to have this, you can just manually turn this. I just like that, but I can show you that you don't have to use it and Put it across there, fold your fabric up like so, do it like this, and do your fabric like so. Then this is ready to sew. It's ready to sew together with some of the other pieces. But like I was saying, you don't have to have these templates because what you can do, well, I'll just use this and pretend like it's the square and what you can do let's just take it loose and I'll show you we'll take it loose okay so what you can do is if you don't, especially if you don't care how it turns out, you can just start cutting it just so far away from the square, see? You don't have to have a template if you wanna just do this. See what I'm saying? Doesn't really matter. And let's see, let's go across here. and come up there. All right, so now you have this piece right here. Once again, It see how crooked and raggedy it is? It's really okay. It's not the end of the world. And I'll show you how I do this without um, the one that has the good ball bearings that turn around. Okay, so you come across here and you Push up there like that. Come to the next side. And you push it up. Come to the next side. So see, it's, but if you're gonna do a bunch of them at once, that's why the template actually works out. But you don't have to have it, you do not. And I see it's okay that this side is shorter than that side. It doesn't really matter. It's okay. And then you start sewing them together. So that's how you do this portion of it. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how. I've cut a bunch of them out for block five. A bunch of the colors. I was watching TV and I had it on the coffee table in front of the couch where I was sitting. And I cut a bunch of these out, and then I needed to, um, see, I just cut a bunch of them out off of these. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to sew, I'll glue these up real quick, a couple of them, and show you how to sew uh, a, one together, uh, okay? Okay, then you go to the next spot. Go through both and see how high I am up at the top. I'm not even going through the cardboard. I'm just up above it, actually. But if you do go on the cardboard, it's okay. And then you go again. And this, to me, I mean, there's just something relaxing about it that 
that seems just fine. I, I like it while I'm watching TV and it's enjoyable to me. Okay. And we do it again. Just every, you know, just every, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so. And we pull it. And then see, here's how it's going. This part's sewn so far. Now my thread, I can see that it's kind of, my little tail is up higher. So I'm gonna pull it back down, so I like it down. And then, let's see, where am I? See, I'm gonna, oh, oh I'm on the wrong side completely. See what I mean? <laughs> Anybody can do this. <laughs> Okay, there I am. Okay, so I'm gonna do it right here. Now, a lot of people, um, I'm going uh, from the inside out. A lot of people go from the outside in. And in some ways it really is easier. And, and that's when you need your thimble to help you get it through does keep it from it doesn't get caught up as much either it's not as bad now those little skinny little needles work quite nicely the straw needles and the little number 10 with the big eye and i have some of those on the way i've ordered see i need to push this one oops and I just sit there and I do this while we're watching, you know. Well, we watch old Perry Mason a lot, you know, stuff like that. But see, it's just coming right along. And as soon as I get this one done, then I'll get busy and I'll go to the next one. I really like this a lot. It's very... Um, there's just, I don't know, there's something kind of therapeutic about it. And I take it with me sometimes, like when my husband goes to buy building supplies and whatever. Sometimes I sit in the truck while he's doing that. And I'll grab this and take it with me so I can sew while I'm waiting for him. So you can do it while you watch YouTube or whatever. So anyhow, see how it's coming along very nicely? Then I'll get busy and this one... When I get busy, this one will see how this tucks right inside there. This one will sew up against this one. And that's how that works. And I just love it. So make sure you like this video and subscribe. Subscribing is free. You don't have to pay anything. And then if you want to order this Yellow Rose Quilt Company, Tula Rose, and um, a bunch of people have all kinds of different patterns for English paper piecing. And like I said, if you don't have cardboard, uh, like I have, I have this 60 pound cardboard because I do, I make cards. So I have a bunch of cardboard, but you can use, you know, things that come in the mail, your voter, your things that tell you how to vote and things like you can actually cut them out of those. It doesn't matter. And if you can't see what it is, you can mark a big C on it in the back. It doesn't matter. So you can use these over and over and over again if you don't ruin them. Or if you do, you can print them back out and do them again. So anyhow, there you have it. It's, it's really, really super easy. And I love it. I, I have just gotten to where I like it so much. So anyhow, please comment down at the bottom. Tell me what you think. Would you want to do English paper, paper piecing or it makes you nervous and you can't stand it or you want to give it a try or you don't like it? It does matter if I get comments. So please make a comment down at the bottom and I will see you on the next video. Okay. Bye my friends. Bye-bye.